Fallout New Vegas, one of the greatest games ever made by Obsidian Entertainment despite its short development time. Sadly, because of that, players around the world never got to experience this masterpiece as it was intended, with many details left unused. In this video, we'll be looking at some of the small things that were left cut from this legendary game. While protecting Aaron Kimball, the president of the NCR, you would have had to deal with a Legion assassin dressed as an NCR ranger on one of the towers. Turns out there's a cut little scene where the assassin actually goes with you to check out the dead ranger's body that he killed, with unused dialogue. It's your own fault for finding this. Now I'm going to have to kill you. Another interesting NPC cut from this quest is a Securitron observing Kimball's speech, with its own voice lines about the President and the outcome of the assassination attempt. I sure hope I get to meet President Kimball. President Kimball is going to arrive pretty soon to give his speech and meet that wounded soldier. Kimball died. Security seems so tight. How could such a thing happen? The death of the President is going to be a permanent blight on this place. If you ever seen one of my videos about all the cut post-game ending content that never made it into the final game, you'll know just how much dialogue was actually cut, including Veronica's reactions to every outcome. One of those reactions that I didn't include is her removed dialogue about the Legion's victory. At some point in the game's development, if you were a member of the Brotherhood of Steel, it was possible to ally with the Legion by passing a speech check and convincing Caesar to not destroy the Brotherhood. And you think the value of their attack on Helios? The chaos it will sow behind the profligate's lines is worth letting them live? All right, let it be so. The Brotherhood will have to be dealt with eventually, but for the moment, they live to serve. This would allow you to keep Veronica as your companion after the Battle of Hoover Dam, which would enable you to ask her opinion about the situation. Never sided with a group of marauders before but I think the Brotherhood stands a better chance against them than they did against the NCR. That gives me some hope. Red Lucy in The Thorn also has cut dialogue lines post-NCR or Legion victory, where she would react to you as an unwelcomed guest and will tell you to leave. The Thorn does not welcome you, stranger. Leave now or suffer the consequences. Another cut post-game appearance can be found in Helios 1. After Brotherhood takeover of the plant, you would have been able to find Fantastic there. The chem-addicted technician now working for the Brotherhood of Steel, with his own suit of power armor and cut greeting. I look so good in this shit. I want you to call me fucking spectacular from now on. Speaking of the Brotherhood, there's also a removed interaction with one of the soldiers tasked to kill you during the quest Still in the Dark, if you choose to betray them. Traitor! Learn what it means to betray the Brotherhood of Steel. Over here! During the final battle of Hoover Dam, if you sided with the NCR and are a member of the Followers of the Apocalypse, you are able to ask the followers to help at the dam by treating wounded NCR soldiers. Although you can find supplies left by the followers in the dam during the final fight, you never really see any of them around. Well, it turns out at least one follower's doctor was intended to be found in and around the dam, but was never implemented. He also has cut voice lines regarding the battle. I hope the Legion doesn't get in here. Sorry, but I'm busy with patients right now. All this bloodshed, such a waste of human life. I'm just a medic, please don't hurt me. Julie Farkas wasn't kidding when she said we would be needed here. After killing Benny and delivering the platinum chip to Mr. House, you may encounter another follower of the apocalypse, named Emily Ortal just outside the Lucky 38, asking you to help bug Mr. House's network for her. If you have Arcade Ganon with you as a companion, he actually has an unused reaction to Emily, ignoring him and only talking to the courier. You might have to manually remove the encryption from his data network, but hopefully you won't have too much trouble. Good luck. Oh, hello Emily. Yes, it is I, Arcade Ganon, fellow member of the Followers of the Apocalypse. Would I like to help infiltrate the Lucky 38? I'm so glad you asked. 
You might have already heard that the Fiend leaders Cook Cook and Driver Nephi had cut dialogue that was never enabled regarding Cook Cook's Brahmin and Nephi's Killing Club. But did you know there was also gender specific dialogue removed? If your character is a female courier, Cook Cook has this cut greeting enabled instead. Hey there, sweet thing. Want to ride on the Cook Cook Express? And if you go talk to Driver Nephi and ask questions about Cook Cook, he has this to say. Really? Listen, you don't want to mess with Cook Cook, and you really don't want to let him get you alone. Trust me. There are plenty of different concept art ideas that were never implemented into the final game, including Robert House's control room. It was originally meant to look a lot more sophisticated and classy, with two big pools of water on each side and nuclear generators at the bottom. Also some old world furniture and even house plants, possibly taken care of by one of the Securitrons. There was even meant to be a picture of House above him, probably to emphasize how deteriorated his body has become throughout the years. Although a holdover from Fallout 3, at one point Obsidian had planned on using special meat preparation animations for the game, with one of these placed in Camp McCarran and another in the Legion Fort. There were even some specific human flesh animations imported from the pit for factions like the White Glove Society. Something even more disturbing that got removed were the cut screams of your companions while on fire. Arcade and Veronica ones were probably the most terrifying. For our last piece of cut content, there was meant to be a second tops promoter just outside the casino itself, trying to convince the player to go visit the Aces Theater. Engaging in conversation, you would have been able to ask more about the different performances available to see. Don't miss the Lonesome Drifter, live at the Aces Theater. Song so sad and lonesome, audience members of the opposite sex will be fighting over who gets to go back to the room with you. Guaranteed. The way I hear it, he's some whack job who used to spend his nights sitting around a campfire and howling to himself. Who wants to hear songs that make you want to cry? I try to tell them, but hey, they don't pay me to ask questions. Do me a favor, go see the show. Otherwise, they'll think I didn't do my job. And that's all I have for you this time. Be sure to check out my other videos for more cut content, and thanks for watching.